Hello everyone, I hope you're well. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Now I'm popping by to um, showcase um, a card with my new release. Now I've got a new release and what I want to show you is I've done no prep, I've got nothing on my desk apart from cut out card and I'm going to create a card and show you how when I first get a new release what I actually do. So I've got my new release here so I've got my stencils, there are five stencils Snippet stencil 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's a heart, there's a tag, a little jar like a mason jar and some light bulbs. And then we've got some stamps to go with them. Now in my, you'll see I've done a video, if you haven't seen that, showcasing the new release, showing the stamps and the measurements, etc. So what I'm going to show you is how I'm going to use some of the new stamps so let's move these all out of the way and what i'm going to do is grab a piece of pink frog smooth card super smooth 300 g s m just white smooth card and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my a5 stamp set i haven't done an a5 stamp set for a while and uh, a lady messaged i'm trying to think which lady it was now and asked if I was going to be doing any of the bigger sizes as well. But yes, I am. So here's my one of the bigger sizes. So this is stamp set TE30 and it's called Garden Elements. And I'm going to take the stamp out. I'm going to show you exactly what I do. So first of all, when I get some stamps, I always stamp them onto a piece of white card. And I just stamp them in black and I, I'm not looking for, per, for perfection. When I first stamp them, I'm just stamping them to get a feel for the stamps. So I'll just show you the stamps, the new releases. So these are the bulbs, the A7 stamp sets. Just adore them. This is the A7 stamp set with the little jar, with the little moth, the insect. This is the seed pods that go together with the honesty or honesty uh, they are the seed pods that go with that so you can use these in the background you can use them both on their own but they work together this one is an a6 stamp set this is an a7 stamp set and the reason i'm showing you these like this i've stamped them on a four inch square pieces and what you could do is you could create a little book and you could add these punch holes in them and you could add these as a um a reference guide to what stamps you've got this is the Honesty, one of the stamps as well, just so that you can see. That's the other one as well, part of the stamp set. This is the A5 stamp set with the wren. And this stamp here, that's a skeleton of a hydrangea petal, flower. Of a har that's a, a, a skeleton of it. Then you've got the Toad Lily and the larger stamp, which is from the A5 stamp set. And if you put them on those pieces, you can stick them on the pieces and then you can just make a little book if you wish. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my stamp set and I've got no idea what I'm doing. And that's why I'm coming along to show you exactly what I do to spark my sort of inspiration to try and get ideas flowing so first of all i always cut a piece of four by six inch card once i've done this stage so i always do this and stamp them in black and white just to get a feel for the stamps and what i do then let's just go out of course the one acrylic block i want i can't grab hold of so i'm just going to grab my acrylic block and what stamp i'm going to use is this stamp here this background stamp so i'm going to use that one and what i'm going to do is i'm going to ink it up with versifying claire morning mist just why there's no reason why just because i fancy stamping in the versifying that's it that's as technical as it gets so i'm going to ink this up 
in the VersaFine Claire and give that a really good inking. Now don't scrimp on your inking. This is it. I'm working from a set of stamps that are A5, so the imagery is larger. So because it's larger, just take a little bit of time just giving a really good inking. Now what you need to decide is, are you putting it straight in the middle? Or are you placing it on one side? What are you doing? So I think this time, because I don't know where I'm going, I'm literally just going to stamp it in the middle, just because I don't know where I'm going with the stamp set. So I'm going to allow that ink to absorb onto the card. And I think it's important to do these videos sometimes just so that you see how I approach a stamp set. I don't panic if it isn't perfect. It doesn't matter. It's just uh, getting to grips, getting a feel for your stamps. Something might have caught your eye on the stamp set and you think, oh, yes, I like that one. But I can bet you anything that once you start using them, you get a new favourite every time you use a different stamp set. So I've got that stamped in grey. And I think that, I personally think that is stunning. Absolutely stunning in its own right. Now, instantly when I see that, I think of this stamp. Of course, Tracy doesn't get it straight away. The minute I see that stamp, I think of these two stamps. I think of this stamp, TE16, which was from my previous release. And the other stamp I think of, let's see if we can put this back, honestly. So I think of TE16, so let's grab TE16 out. And then I think of this little A8 stamp with art on there. I think of that stamp as well. So let's grab those stamps out. And I instantly know, because of the feel of this stamp, that this stamp here is going to go... No, I don't want black. This stamp is going to go really nicely. So I'm going to take a little bit of this. Let's just dab a little bit of that off there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend my background. And I'm just using this off the acrylic block. And nobody will know that that wasn't designed that way. I'm going to take, let's take a little bit more of this stamp. And this is what I love about stamps that will work together really nicely so I can just stamp part of that stamp and it just extends the design beautifully I just I just adore it it just extends it just without even thinking about it this is what I love about stamps so let's take a little bit more and then I can extend this a little bit more sort of there just fantastic I can just extend the design which also means that my previous release are also taking on a new life so I've got this and it's got free your imagination on this A8 stamp so I'm going to use that and I can't recommend you doing this enough just pick up your stamps and create your own little little collage. So free your imagination. So let's add free your imagination there, like so. Now you tell me who would think that isn't one background stamp? Who wouldn't think it is one background stamp? So let's take the whole stamp here. And I'm just giving this a really good... Now, my morning mist probably could do, to be honest, I could do with a new ink pad, but that doesn't bother me because I'm going to add to the effect. So I'm just sort of 
dabbing around this. And then I'm going to add the... <laughs> Do you know, I knew I was going to take it off the block the minute I put it on the acrylic block because I'm terrible at that. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I can have it a little bit more random if I wish. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can be a little bit more distressed. Just, just wonderful. It looks like a whole, whole stamp. And the reason it looks like a whole stamp is because the whole thing is designed by me and it's all co cohesive and that's why it works together. So the grey isn't usually as wet as the black, so I think I can get away with that. But I'm just going to get a piece of copier paper. Now, any of you can create that. Any of you can do that. Really simple. So just giving that a blot, just so that I don't make a mess. That's what we've got. And any one of you can do that. No problem at all. Just stamping in grey. Right, what colour am I going to... Let's see if we've got some blending brushes. So, red and an orange and maybe a bit of yellow. So I've got some blending brushes here with yellow, orange and a ready colour. The blending brushes are on my website. And let's, let's decide on some colours. It's not going to be difficult. So Distress Oxides, Mustard Seed, Spice Marmalade. And you can hear me getting those ink pads. I've not got anything prepped. Candied Apple. So we'll have those three colours. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab one of the light bulbs. So which one do I fancy? Shall we have the fatter one? Let's take that. We don't need to keep this in the packaging because that will drive me mad. And I will be doing some larger stencils, just not yet, because I'm just absolutely adoring these. You've now got the cutout and you've also got the stencil itself. So whichever one you wish to use. Now, what I've got here is I've got choices. Let's grab the copy of paper. And because Tracy's all excited, she's got no room on a desk for anything to even move. There's just no room. Let's try and move some of these out of the way. And then we've torn those pieces of copier paper just so we can protect the areas we don't want to. So I actually may use some low tack tape. Never mind, I've just torn the copy of paper. I'm going to use some low tack tape. And now you've got choices. Where do you want to put your light bulb? You can just put it anywhere. Do I want it there or do I want it here? Nobody, you know, I'm going to have it here. And it doesn't matter because I can do another card with it in a different place. It makes no difference. I'm going to take some low tack tape that I'm just placing my fingers all over. Just so it releases some of that tackiness. So let's just place that on there. And what Tracy needs to do then is just... Well, it would help if I got the right pair of scissors. Just make sure that you can actually see it. And I think it would be better up there. So you can actually see what I'm doing. So I'm just, let's just release a little bit of that tackiness. Cover that side of the card up. And it does help if you're not using your curved scissors to cut that out. Now what I've done is I've masked off most of my background apart from that light bulb. 
And just in case I go really hard with the colours, let's just cover the top up here. Like so. So I've just got everything covered up apart from this light bulb. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my mustard seed. And I've got my blending brushes. You can either hold your hand down here. And what I'd recommend is hold your hand down there and really get some good layers of ink on that blending brush. Really good. Now, if you want to really go in with the colour, hold it here. If you want to go in gently, hold your brush further up. And what I'm going to do is just blend a little bit of that yellow. Now, if you've used black ink, just make sure that your ink is dry. That's all. So then I'm going to go to Spiced Marmalade, hold my brush, get a good layer of ink. I can press as hard as I want when I'm holding it this far down. And then I don't even need to hold the stencil. I can then come in with the orange and just blend the orange. If you want it darker in colour, so for this I want it a little bit darker, you can come in and just add a little bit darker. And we're going to add layers of that colour. So let's just take the candied apple and then it's up to you. You can hold up here. If you're a bit frightened of colour and it, it scares you a little bit, you can add it very lightly like this or bring your fingers down, your hands down, and you can add it darker. Coming down like so. Now for me, there's not enough orange on there, so we'll go to the orange. And let's add a little bit more of that orange. Then I don't really need to add more ink to the yellow because I know there's plenty on there. Okay. So I don't want to spritz at the moment until I just lift. So let's move this out of the way. So this is exactly what I do. And this is why I get excited over stamps. So let me make sure my hands are clean and then let's remove the low tack tape and we'll try and remember to be good and save that so we don't waste it. I've actually remembered the right order which is unheard of for me when I'm pulling these away. then if we just lift this up look at that oh I love it absolutely love that absolutely love it so you've still got that light bulb there so let's grab another piece of card and let's give the stencil a little bit of a spritz so I've got my stencil it's spritzed with water let me just grab some kitchen roll. I've got the biggest roll of kitchen roll under the desk you've ever seen. It's one of these huge ones. Now I'm just going to, there's a little bit of a straight line there so I'm just diffusing that a little bit. It should diffuse a bit anyway with the water. So let's add this one to this side. So your stencil's down there, so I'm not going to press anything. I'm going to use my kitchen roll just to absorb any excess moisture. And then I'm going to just add that just down like this. And that will, there's hardly any moisture on there, so it's just, that's fine. And now I've got a little bit of a bulb shape there that I can use. Sometimes I use everything, sometimes I don't. It doesn't matter. But I've now got 
the bulb shape just on there, which is just wonderful. I'll just let that dry a little bit, just so that we've got that. So then, where's my... I've got the bulb shape on here. So we can just add this bulb on here as well, like so. And then, am I going to, yes. I'm going to add, so what I suggest you do is, I'm going to take some low tack tape. I'm trying to think of ways that makes it easy for you. And just, this is the way I think when I'm sitting at home and I've got plenty of time on my hands. Let's have it that way. Okay, so let's have that there like so so i've got my stencil on there now and what we need to do is i'm just going to i don't think i even need to mask off so i'm going to use my brush now and i'm just going to just blend just over the stencil just around the edges and what I always try to do is not put any pressure on myself. So what I mean by that is I try not to panic too much about making mistakes because if it's a mistake, I can easily cut that light bulb out and I can use it on something else. So I'm just... Let's just have... I'm just going around with that mustard seed. I nearly forgot the colour then. So then I'm just using the colour that is actually on the blending brush. So I'm just going to bl blend a little bit of the orange. And you don't have to blend it all, all the way round. You can just blend little areas with the colour that you've got. And then I'm going to use a little bit of the, can't remember, candied apple. And I can come a little bit further out if I wish. There we go. And now we can lift our card up. Not card, this is a stencil trace, isn't it? And can you see, you've got the light bulb on there as well. It just works really nicely just to add that background detail so just so you can see that now i have this stencil that's now got ink on there so I'm, i've got a, that sticky low tack tape on there so i'll leave that with my fingers and just spritz the stencil whoops without knocking the camera so i've just spritzed the stencil and now i can use the stickiness that's on there and I can place this down anywhere that I wish. Like so. Then just peel away. Because I can use that for something else. And then I'm just going to dab with my kitchen towel. Just in case I need to absorb any little bits of moisture. And what I'm going to do is just give that a few seconds just so that the colour just absorbs onto the card so that when I lift it, it doesn't just move too much. Some of it has absorbed onto the card. So I'm just going to give that a little bit of time. go let's lift that up now and now I've sort of got so what you've done is you've created let me show you move that out of the way what you're doing is creating something of a background so that can easily be another card that we'll we'll decide on that 
that's fine. So I just love how the background stamp works with this. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to add a little bit of shading just around this bauble. Now, obviously, I've used oxiding, so you need to be aware that you're going to react with that when I add a little bit of the moisture. So just be aware of that. And for me, the best thing to do is to play, because once you play, it works a whole lot better. Let's grab some water, my little brush. Let's come in here. There we go. And then I'm just going to, because I've got this fine brush, it really is a game changer. Because with it being so fine, it sort of, it stops me from adding too much moisture and everything swimming away and it's easier not to touch the oxide ink it makes it a lot easier so let's just go round obviously I need to be a bit more mindful here So we've got that shape of the bauble and we've also got the fact that we've got the other bauble in the background. Whilst that just sort of, is this still wet? I think that is still a little, I don't want to dry anything but that is a little bit wet. What was I just thinking then? Um, so I was thinking we grab this stencil here, like so. And do I want to add it in the... I'm going to add a little bit more colour. Just to the stencil. Just so that that pops a little bit more. Just so that I've got that bauble and then it sort of gives you the white edge because you put the stencil down and then you're putting the stencil here and you get like a little bit of a white halo and it really is it works really nicely so what I can do now I can see the shape of the stencil where I use the outside bit I can see that there so let's just add little bit more of the orange and also if you don't finish a project don't worry about it oh, just this is where inspiration sparks and I've still got that on there and I've still got this on here that I could create another card with just one it just brings me so much joy so what I can do then is I can take my grey ink and I can take TE16, which is the artsy alphas and numbers. And this is why I did the light bulbs as well. So we can also keep using these background stamps. Now, I don't have to just get inside the area here because this is like a little collage in its own right. So what I can do here is use my morning mist and I can just take a little bit of the ink and if you're not sure where you've inked just diffuse some of it a little bit just so it's a little bit more distressed because that's how it's meant to look so just add so let's add a little bit of that text here and we don't know what we've added so let's just stamp over Keep it in place just in case you're not happy. There you go. 
love, love, love. And I love the fact that I've now got other images and other stamps I can use with that artsy alphas and numbers, which just brings me lots of joy. So I've stamped and there's some distress oxide underneath there. So let's just give that a little bit of a, a blot. And then what I'll do then is we'll take the stencil again. And maybe this time we'll grab a little bit more of the candied apple. So take a little bit more of the candied apple. And then we're just going to blend a little bit more. A little bit more around the edges. Just so that it's got a little bit more definition. And it's funny because that's now in the foreground. Then we'll take this, which you saw me just spritz off the moisture from the stent the colour that was on the stencil. We'll then take the spiced marmalade. So just remember as it is now, and then I'll go and place this like so, and we'll just add some of the orange. Turn your stencil, hold it down with a piece of low tack tape, should you wish. It's entirely up to you. just so that you can see. Just look at this, it's all over my fingers. Adding layers of the colour, like you would with pencils or anything really, adding those layers really does bring the image to life. Now, your, your light bulb can be this way, because I've added it this way, or it can be that way. Okay, so it's entirely up to you which way you have that light bulb because obviously we can have it both ways so these are what we've got so far and then let's take another piece of four by six and now you've got the color on here so let's spritz this with water got plenty of water on there let's do this again but let's do it the other way up so it's entirely up to you which way you would like the light bulbs. Just remember that it can be either way. And again, use some kitchen roll just to dab up any, any excess moisture that there might be. And also just give that a few seconds just so that that grabs hold. Now, just be aware that this is a YouTube video that I'm doing where I am playing. Doesn't mean you'll finish something. It's just giving you ideas of what I do when I get some new products home. Okay, so we've got the bauble there. You've still probably got some ink on there that you could use, but let's wipe that up or else I could end up keeping you here for a whole week. Let's add this on here and then I can, you can even put your finger through there so that you're holding the stencil like so and we'll spritz that so that we've got the stencil again. I'm not doing it the right way up now, am I? So let's place that on there. I can remove that low tack tape. Then I can just grab some clean kitchen roll, cleanish anyway, and just allow that to absorb onto the surface of the card. And just give that a few moments. Just give it time. And every now and then, I do like to do 
videos like this where we go through things in great detail. And again, we can give that a little bit of time to do its thing. So on these ones, I've used them this way up, but obviously you can use them that way up as well. It's entirely up to you, whichever way you want to use them. And that's why I like these kind of images because you can use them whatever way you wish. And already because I'm doing this, other ideas are already sparking in my head. And that's why when you play, it really does help with that inspiration. It just, it really does. Right, now let's grab the light bulb. So you've got a coordinating light bulb that goes with the stencils as well. And this one is Creative Spark TE24. So let's just place that back. So let's grab TE24. Now this video might be really, really long. You can easily fast forward anything you don't want to listen to. So on here, I've got this little sort of compass design. Now I'm just thinking I want the light bulb. This is what I'm gonna be like the whole time, swapping and changing my ideas because I don't have a plan. And that's what I like best about not having a plan. See, I want that there now. And now I'm going to stamp this in black. So let's ink this in black. Now, it doesn't have to be in black. It's entirely up to you. But I'm just building my composition. And because they all work together beautifully, this will also fit inside the bauble, which works really nicely too. But I really wanted to do a video like this where I just show you what I do when I get some stamps. I have no idea what I'm doing. And you can see what I do is I just play. Let's just lift that up. Just just gorgeous but I just play with the whole design I absolutely love playing it just brings me so much joy so what we can do is we can carry on with the collage so we've got some scrap paper here which is rather handy let's see if we can get an impression oh yes you can get a second generation print look and that looks just as good but while we've got that second generation print we can create ourselves a mask like so so just go around So now I've got a little mask, which I will keep. Let's place this here. And if you get to this stage and you think, I don't know what else to do, don't do anything else. Come back to it another time. I do that many times. So let's just take these. Also, what I'd like to show you is, you see the little light bulb? Imagine these as Christmas little light bulbs dangling and you can dangle it down on a chain and you can create a seasonal make as well all year round inspiration and that's what that's what i love about stamps ideas just keep flowing 
So I'm going to use the morning mist. So let's take that morning mist. And I've got like the compass type image. And let's add that here, like so. And because I'm using that copier paper, it means I won't get a ridge, so it works nicely. And I'm using the morning mist so that I've got the grey. Now the bulb will be in the foreground and the compass-esque type stamp will be in the background. There we go, just beautiful. It works so nicely that you're now just sort of building that composition. Absolutely, just love it. Oops, right, let's just move these out of the way. We've still got this as well that we can do something with. Let's just move that there. And then let's bring in, let's move these out of the way. I want some scrap card now. And the scrap card that I may have done myself is hidden. There it is, some scrap card. Let's move this out of the way just for a moment. And then I've got this jar which is jar of wishes and i've got the little florals on here which coordinate with the six by six stencil wildflower so those coordinate with the six by six stencil wildflower anybody think i thought this out oh i did I spent many a time thinking this out So let's now take the largest of the flower. It's an A7 stamp set, but the floral is a really good size. You can have it straight if you want. You can have it slightly curved if you wish. It's entirely up to you. So red and orange. So I'm going to use some paints. I'm going to take the paints. So this is like a little workshop, really, that I'm doing for you. So I'm going to, let's just check that's nice. And so I'm going to add a little bit of the red. That's definitely not a little bit, but you know what I mean. Then we're going to add some of the orange. So the red is... is hmm, the words won't come out the red is ruby and the orange is tangerine but any red and orange paint is absolutely fine do i have another piece yes that, yes that'll do so we'll use the red paint here and just add that on the stamp and then we'll just grab a little bit of the orange and just dab that on the stamp go back to a little bit more of the red and diffuse that and just add a little bit of orange on there see how it works without any water to spritz that stamp with oh yes that just works just how i need it and then let's just take a little bit of a wipe I did have one, but I've lost it. Don't ask me how you can lose a Y. Nobody knows. Now, when you're using paint on your stamp, just give that a nice little clean. Even if you're going to go back in with paint, just give that a little bit of a clean, just so that paint and the texture from that paint doesn't stay on there. We then we'll take some water and we're then going to add, well, there's hardly any ruby on there. We're going to add a little bit more definition. So let's take the ruby. And I've got a nice fine brush. What does that mean? The fine brush means that I don't overload the brush, which actually makes things 
a little bit easier. You wouldn't think so, but honestly, it does because it forces you to not add too much pigment. So there's the ruby. I'm then going to take a little bit of the orange. And if you do a workshop properly, it does take time. Not everything is in five seconds. So I'm just adding layers of that colour. Let's just give that a little bit of a, a clean. And you can see I've not got a jar of water or anything. I'm just using exactly what I've got. And I'm going to go in and I'm, I'm, I'm sort of dabbing now just to give a little bit more depth, texture. And by dabbing, I'm adding thicker layers of paint and diffusing the edges just a little bit. So let's just bring in a little bit of the stem. And don't always look for perfection. There's no such thing as perfection. But just bring in a little bit of the detail of the stem. And I'm hardly using any paint. And honestly, the difference that this fine brush makes is just unbelievable. So let's pick up a little bit of that orange. You see, you don't pick up too much then. The little sort of fine brush stops you from picking up too much pigment. And I can go in and dab a little bit more. And as the paint layers are drying, you're adding more depth to that, that floral. Obviously, I would leave that there and use use all that paint or let's move this up you, you do know i'm going to be doing this every five seconds one project leads to another but i'm trying to show you exactly it's really difficult because sometimes people think you've prepped and i haven't prepped so what we can do now you've got this on here and i've got all this paint on here what about if i yeah so I've got all this paint on here. Um, I haven't got my brayer. I don't know whether the paint mat, the paint is already drying. It may be. What you could do is you brayer the paint on here. Let's have a look what we've got. Stop faffing, Tracy. So take the orange and red paint and just dab this just onto the stencil. And then just give that a spritz and just see if anything comes off. It's a piece of card. It really doesn't matter. So add that on there. And let's just give that a few moments just to absorb onto the card. Just to show you, sometimes I don't waste anything. And sometimes I will do these backgrounds and I might not use this as a background. I might use a cut out piece. So I don't always use them as a background. Sometimes I will use the cut out piece. So just some clean kitchen roll. And then you've got another bauble on there. Doesn't it look just wonderful? And I've still got that paint on there. Obviously, I'm not going to do another one because obviously you could end up here for a week. So, but you don't waste that. You go in, spritz it with water again, 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 again. And that way... you can create even more of a background. So let's just have a bit of a clean up because we are getting in a little bit of a mess at the moment. So 
so let's just have a little bit of a clean up when you're recording a video why does somebody always ring you you do me anyway let's leave that on there i'm now in less than two inches of space you couldn't make it up if you tried two inches of space if that i'm in but what you've got and what you do then is you can sit there and think oh look what i've got you've got all these designs you can even sort of cut this out and add that one on top of here as well so i'll cut that out and just have a look so it's just sort of playing around and you've got to cut out bits sometimes just to experiment right so let's cut out well you haven't got to cut out it's your project but i love cutting out little bits and pieces just to see what i like so let's just just a little bit of a white border very tiny just to make that little floral pop and now you can use this with your six inch by six inch stencil and add another dimension to your designs with the actual same florally design but in a stamp let's just place this back so then i can add my floral just like so that it's going to have some depth to that but don't forget we're going to have one in black as well so don't worry we're going to sort of build the layers on that um <laughs> that's if you can find the stamp so i'm now going to have this in black so let's take this in black then you can also take i don't know whether this stamp might be too wet you can also take a little bit shall we do that with the light bulb let's stamp one plain first and then i'll do it with the light bulb honestly you can't make it up so we'll stamp this in black where's the, oh i've got the light bulb so i've got one in black and what we're going to do then is we'll take the light bulb i don't know whether my ink pad might be too wet because it always works best if you're black that's great tracy if you're black isn't too wet so give that an inking i'm then going to take the light bulb oh so it's this way yes then i'm going to take the little compass i'm going to press that the light bulb isn't straight on the acrylic block but there you go stamp that on there let's see if it works well we've definitely removed some ink so let's stamp the light bulb just give that a couple of seconds and again if something doesn't work don't worry about it but look doesn't it look cool just wonderful oh can't tell you why stamps make me so happy right so let's go around i'm going to leave a white border now if there are people that don't like a white border that's fine it's your project don't add a white border for me on some occasions it just helps with bringing life um, brightness just to the design we're all different so let's cut this out And I do like to offer inspiration and education as much as possible to also say a huge thank you for your support. So you've now got this bauble and I want this. Do I want it? I want it. 
here so it becomes like my vase like so let's cut out the black one I'm going to add dimension with the florals just so they are uppermost trying to remember to keep this in camera when I'm cutting is sometimes difficult because I do like to bring it towards my chest it's just automatic as I'm moving the card around because I move the card rather than my scissors that makes cutting out far more simplified there we go so I've now got this floral and I'm going to so we'll have the black would go first this is going to go second you do realize they're all going to move anyway so what I'm going to do just grab this how I want I'm now going to trim the base of these and I'm then going to grab my adhesive and I'm going to use my pin flare. And if you had got any sense, you would do the touches of white first, but I'm not. That's me all over. So I'm adding a little bit of pin flare. I don't need to add any to the stems because the vase will capture that. There we go. Is that? up a bit more and this is why I like using adhesives that move because Tracy can't get it in the right place straight away look at that oh sorry just makes me so happy then we'll just add this here can you see how it's developing the whole thing I have to say, I am loving that. We've got to add touches of white as well. We've still got to finish our design. Let's just push that up a minute. And then I'm going to take the other little floral. Let's take, like so. Take this smaller floral. So, so you can see I've covered up that text, which was free your imagination. That doesn't matter because I'm going to add that on top. Don't worry, I've not forgotten. Right, because my brain's working overtime as I'm doing all this. Um, so then I'm going to take the red again. Don't put too much out, Tracy. Then I'm going to take the tangerine. There's not much of the tangerine left. So then I'm going to pick up the red. Then a little bit of the orange. Just to diffuse. Let's add a little bit of the orange down there. Stamp this. Obviously, don't let your paint dry too much on your stamp because you want to be able to just clean your stamp. I don't normally clean my stamps, but I do when it's paint because you don't want to use that beauty, lose that beautiful detail. So again, I'm going to go in with a tiny bit of water. I don't think there's much paint left. But it instantly, you might not see it on screen, but in real life, as I add this second layer of colour, it just pops. 
and just add another layer of that orange like so and then I can just add a little bit more but you can see how in an hour how many things just spark especially if you've got a quality design that that sort of sparks inspiration no pun and needed with the spark and the light bulb didn't realize what I was saying that's me all over there we go now i just need to remember to clean that brush because i love this brush so much i am not going to let paint dry on it so i'm just going to a new Tracy that does that cleans her brushes, especially this fine one. So then I'm going to cut this floral out. Like so. Again, very, very, very fine touch of white. Again, I don't have to stick the stem and I can just add this one. So let's add a little bit of pin flare. And again, you would let the pin flare dry. before you try and add any touches of white, unlike Tracy, who doesn't do that kind of thing, because that would make too much perfect sense. You've also, you know when I stamped the little composite type thing onto the bulb, the actual stamp, and then I stamped off what ink I'd removed from the stamp? That was the little bit that's there. You can even, use and it's slightly distressed but what I'm trying to show you is, is without a H how different things spark inspiration so you can then if you wish you can let's have so you can even add sort of bits to your light bulb if you wish i'm not going to but i'm just showing you how little bits spark other touches of interest but that almost looks like sort of light shining from the doesn't it looks really nice so now i'm not going to finish all the cards i'm just finishing this one because then you can see that we've half created a background here which i will finish and you'll see the card and then We've got this here. So just showing you processes that I go through. Um, oh, do you know, I'd, I'd lost track then of what I was going to do. Let's grab the grey Inktense pencil. And we, again, not really sensible, trying to add a little bit of Ink Tense Pencil, the grey, 203, I would think it is, China ink. Not sensible, really, trying to add the shading to something that's actually still moving. So just blend that out, like so. just so it's got a little bit of shading. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of shading just around here. And I am well aware that I have got that oxide ink on there. But just giving that a little bit more definition. But this is how much time I take when I'm, I'm making anything. I just take my time. I 
So with the brush, I'm sort of lightly touching just to react a little bit of that. Just to, to give that a little bit of reaction. Let's, I keep saying I'm going to use my wipe and it's the same wipe with a load of gunk on there. I'm just going to add a little bit more here. Where is my, I think I'm going to be using these stamps a heck of a lot because it just spark, it, it just inspires me. Right, now we've got our white Posca pen which you would usually do when it's dry. But hey ho, I'm not doing that. Okay, so you've got your white on here. And I would go in and add layers of this white because you've got the oxide ink on there. I would add layers. Just go in and add that white. I'm then going to take TE17, the art stamp, the one that's got the um, Free Your Imagination. Let's just take that. Let me show you this. See, this is why inspiration strikes everywhere. That's the mask. But look at the light bulb with that compassy thing on. That inspires me to do something else as well. This is where inspiration just takes over when you're doing anything. It's just wonderful. So you could even use the papery mask as well because it just works so beautifully. Just, oh, I love it. So let's use Free Your Imagination. Add that to our card. You don't need to press that sentiment too hard. You don't want to squish that. Let's see if I can remember not to put my arm right across the camera. Let's have that like so. So you can add the Free Your Imagination just here on the edge. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll use the Versafine Claire Nocturne. Please be aware that if you use a brand new Nocturne, the ink on the edge of your card is going to be very wet. Mine's not a brand new one. I tend to save some of my older Nocturne ink pads for things like this so that it's not too wet. So let's take, add a little bit of adhesive on that side, wrong side completely, on that side. What a drip. So just take my scissors there we go then we'll add some little splatters because I like the splatters and just decide where you would like the splatters and you can see I didn't add too many to the light bulb mainly because I don't want to cover up that beautiful sort of detail there. So I haven't covered that up. I just love it as it is. Where's my... So then, if we look on the A5 stamp set, you've got the Blackbirds and you've got the Wren. So I'm going to use the little Blackbird birds. I put them facing each other. 
Oh, I've got so many stamps everywhere. You can tell when Tracy gets carried away. Like so. Let's just put this little bit back. And for the amount of ideas I've got, I need about... I could be using these for a year and I still wouldn't run out of ideas. So let's take the blackbirds. Can't decide which one I want. So when you can't decide which one you want, use both. And stamp them both, then decide. I'm going to take my little blackbeard. And just cut out the little black bead. And this is where I have to try and remember not to chop his little beak off. And what didn't I do? I didn't cut out the feet first to make it easier which does make it easy when you cut out the feet first and not do it second like I'm doing now. And you can see why, because your paper starts to fold and bend. That's why you cut the feet out first. There we go. So I've got my little black beard which I'm just going to add here on the end here and while I remember let's add the touches of white here and there then we'll just adhere our little black beard and it just takes a few moments and again if you waited unlike me until things dry before you do things like add the blackbeard it would work far easier and just so that you can see that just works really Nicely, it just works beautifully. I'm going to be coming back with so many ideas. I just love them. Right, let's place that. Let's at least sort of finish it a little bit. Let's place that onto a black card, which really makes that pop. So let's add that to a black card. Just to add. There we go. And my fur babies will be sitting there with the little stomachs rumbling because their mum has been too engrossed in creating. They'll be like, Mum, come and feed me. Feed me now. So, just so you can see, just lovely. And then let's add that to a five by seven card blank. So that what the piece I was working on was four by six. The mat in black is four and a quarter by six and a quarter inches. And then the card blank is five by seven. If you put an insert in the card, it's a nice little touch or on the envelope. So let's add this to here. Like so. Not finished there yet, you know. I want to show you how inspiration can strike. So you see you've got your card here. Let me show you something else that matches. I'm going to be like this the whole time. I need about, I don't know how long. So let's put this stamp back. Now there's a piece of acetate somewhere, which I should really keep them together. Let's go and find the packaging. So we've just used that one, TE24. 
Let's place that back. And if we go to TE25, Moments in Time, the clock we used in the background, I've also given it to you separately. So you no longer need, you can create your own ephemera. All right. So take the clock, let's stamp the clock that Tracy cannot pick up. Let's stamp this in black. And I've distressed it so it's got some distressed areas in it. lost the stamp already so then let's just cut this out and then we hey ho we have our own embellishment let's just cut this out And that's not difficult to cut out. So you've now got your own embellishment that you can use within your project, like so. So that it coordinates with this stamp here that we used, let me pick it up, from the A5 stamp set. So it coordinates with that. So you can extend your design. Now, do I want the whole clock or half a clock? Let's just move that out of the way. Look through the camera. I think I want it like that. So, let's take the little bit of the clock and stick that down. So now I can create my own embellishments can tuck that in, either use your tweezers or tuck that in, press that down so it makes contact. So then you've got the grey one that's in the background and the black one that's in the foreground. But it shows you how everything, every single stamp set has been thought about. Just so that you can see that. So doesn't that just look fab? Well, I think it does. So we created that card and you've still got these pieces here. So, I mean, I'm not going to finish this as we'll be here for another hour. I say this every time. So... You could cut the light bulb out. So I've shown you, you could have kept it like that. And just cut. This was the print we did from the paint. So, there we go. So you've now got the light bulb, which again, you can add to your project if you wished. Again, you could turn it so that it's sort of, that is the main one, because it, become, it could look like a hot air balloon, couldn't it? So you could add this one here. Honestly, this is, this is my problem. I, I just can't stop. And what you can do, I'm just giving you sort of snippets of an idea. So, on this stamp set here, the A5 stamp set, you've got the wren here. So let's take the wren. So you can pick up... Actually, you don't need to... Do I want to... So you could stamp... So I'm just giving you little snippets of 
ideas. So you could use the wren, ink, the stamp. Try not to ink your acrylic block as much as I'm doing now. So you could add your wren here, like so. Just give that a little bit of time. You've got that, you've you sort of spritzed it with water, you placed the stencil down and it was paint. So you just need to give that a little bit of time just to absorb onto the surface of that light bulb. There we go. Let's just clean that. So you've got your wren on here as well, like so that we can add. We don't want to cover all, that was ours, you see, you don't want to cover all. So this, let me just add this here. This will just become 3D. You can leave that like that if you want, but this will just become 3D. I'm thinking of adding lots of layers, you see, with this one. So again, you would let the ink dry before you come in and try and just add your touches of white. There's so a little speck on my stamp. There you go. Sometimes you get a little bit of extra polymer. So let's just take... Where's the... You see, I put it away, didn't I? So we can take one of the clocks from TE25, because Tracy can't remember what it's called. Let's just put the wren back a minute. Now, you're not going to finish this card, Tracy. Honestly, this is the problem. I get so engrossed. And take the other clock. Let's take that black ink. It's no wonder you have to have a clean up after all this. Where's 12 o'clock? There you go. Tracy can't work out 12 and 6. Have I got that right? Does it matter? Oh, good grief, just do it. There you go. Do you like how I spend so long faffing on a little bit of a clock detail? You see, you just, oh, love it, you're just building up your composition. And I'm thinking lots of light bulbs on this, so you can just see underneath. So let's just take... Uh, let's put that on here, like so. Just bend that a little bit. Just so that that is just... Obviously, there's lots more detail to add yet. Because this is the kind of project I would spend ages on. So I would then take the light bulb. Shall we put the clock back? I am going to stop in a minute, but I'm just too engrossed. Let's get the other clock, the uh, clock light bulb. Let's take the other light bulb. And this is why I end up spending just ages playing. Again, I'm going to stamp this one. 
I just about caught that on the paper then. I nearly went over the edge. My desk, my desk is just such a mess. Just take our light bulb and we'll cut that out. And each time you do a project, as you're playing, it just sparks off some other ideas. So then, this would have a little bit of dimension. And this would come down here, like so. So let's add, uh, where's the 3D? The adhesive. So again, just take your time and just play and I can even I'm going to stop after this I'll show you how I finish this off but if I wanted to add even more depth so I can take a little bit of the red a little bit of the orange So that's just a little bit of water. What did I say? I'll stop in a minute. Mm. So obviously I'm going to try and colour now. Whilst the ball was wet. Because that's just me all over. And you can tell when Trace is losing herself because she loses track of the whole time and everything. Let's just so I'm just blending the two colours together. And just giving it a little bit more depth and dimension. And you have to remember that I really enjoy sort of faffing. So go back in with the red and I'm just going to come back in. Just like so. And most of you will know by now that I can I can spend ages just playing. You know, and what I what I tend to do a lot of is start a project, don't finish it, come back to my desk, and it can sometimes be two days later. And then I will decide what I'm going to do on that. So it, it just varies each time. And then I wouldn't waste that. See that paint there? Oh, honestly, let me just, don't forget your brush. Let me just, actually I could bray it that, but I'm not going to because I'm just going to do something else now. So we've got this light bulb here. I'm going to add, where's my kitchen roll? See the excitement's taking over now. Let's add a little bit of that. And let's just add a little bit of, of the orange. So what I'm doing is I'm sort of giving everything a little bit more definition as if you were colouring with your 
pencils and just just giving that a little bit more definition. Now you don't have to do this. But I it's just it's what I enjoy doing. It's part of the enjoyment of of creating for me. Let's just take a tiny bit of the orange. And I would let that dry and probably come in and add some more dimension as well. I will show you that once it's finished. I would also, I wouldn't bin this. I would take, where's my other piece of cut and dry foam? You two can get in a total mess like Tracy. Let's move these pieces of card out of the way. And then you can just look, there it is. So I would pick up the red, then I'd pick up the orange, like so, and add this to my background, not waste any of that. Come back, add a little bit more of the red over the top. Like so. And then, where is the lids to the paints? Let's just clean this up a little bit before we get in a total disaster area. And then you could come in and just use this as one of your baubles quite easily. Or if you wanted to use, where's the bauble that I've just had out? Like with the scissors. Say you wanted to use this bauble and you want it to be that colour. You just need something so you can cut around. So I would use something like Portobello. Just go round with the Portobello. Just so that you can pick up some of the detail. Because then you can use your stamp as well. Let's see if it'll just show up on here. Please remember, I've not dried this paint. You really should dry the paint. It's just that I'm getting excited, just showing you different ideas. And you really should. Oh, there you go. I can see that instantly. So now I've got the shape of the bauble. And if you don't like colouring, you've got something coloured automatically. Now what have I done? I've stamped in archival ink straight onto paint so there's no way that that's going to be dry. Not ever. So you just need to, before I add some more paint, I'm just going to blot that because it just won't be dry. just so that you can see it's not going to be dry if you can see that but now you can use that cut that out and you've got a mask but can you see how I'm showing you how the ideas develop so now let's take the red and the orange again now I've got the bauble that was in stamp form the bauble the light bulb that's in stamp form and I can use that now in my project but I can use the paint so the oh, ruby which just won't come out the words won't come out I can't say ruby for some reason nobody knows why so go in with my paint just with the ruby and whilst that paint's still wet, pick up the orange. Like so. And what you would do is sort of let each layer dry. And you would come in and each time you add a layer, you're getting, you're getting more and more texture. 
So take up that orange. Now, if you don't want to do it with a pen, with a paintbrush, that's not a pencil, Tracy. Let's just clean my brush. Now, if you don't want to do it with a brush, then do it this way. Take your blending brushes or your cut and dry foam, add the texture by dabbing, take the orange, take the red and add more. And what you're doing by adding a dabbing and tapping motion, one, you're blending the colours and two, you're adding depth of colour. Let's just clean that up because if you give it a few moments to dry, you can then add another layer of colour. So give that time to dry just so that you can see the bulb there. I would give that time to dry and then I would come back and I'd go again and I'd just add another layer and just dab and you, you do get dimension. I don't think the orange needs any more on. And you can just keep dabbing. There we go. So you can keep going in with more and more dimension. Now I'm going to finish there because I'll be on forever. I'll show you how I finish this off. But I could add this here like so and I'll probably I may add some white embossing just so it balances out but I'm going to keep layering the light bulbs and then maybe put a floral on but I'll show you how I finish that off because I'm aware that I've kept you for quite a while now Tracy can't get let's just give I'm aware that I've kept you for quite a while and I am terrible for, for waffling. You can also, with the bauble that you've cut out, you've now got a little stencil that you can use. So just trying to give you lots of ideas and to show you just how versatile those products are. Once your paint is dry, I would sort of go in and add a little bit more detail and personally I would add that when it's completely dry and also to coordinate with this a little bit this is when you start thinking about the detail I'd bring in the clock again Again, wait until that dries because you don't really want to do what I'm doing. You really want to make sure that that dries. So you've got that on the left. Let's have this on. No, because that will get hidden. This is where I talk to myself constantly. So let's just have a little bit of that clock on there. There we go, just a tiny little bit of that clock. Let me just, in fact, I'm not happy with that. So what we'll do is when that, like exactly like I said, when it's dry, we'll add that. So you just need to let that dry. And then I would add this bauble here. When it's dry, add the bauble here, like so. Oh, I can't help it. I'm going to have to dry it. Let me dry this. I have to do a job properly. Oh, 
But now what I'm doing is I'm giving you an insight to what I'm really like. Look at my desk. Look how messy my desk is. This is an insight to what it's really like. Okay. So let's just, hopefully that's a little bit drier. Let's do things properly. Let's ink the stamp up again. Is that dry? Make sure you've used the correct ink pad, which is for me is, well, I know what I'm like. You could take the bulb, the, stop calling it a bauble. You could take the light bulb to the stamp if you wish, if you prefer it that way. But I tend to find you can get a few little smudges that way. There we go, much better. See, this is why you follow procedures. And always remember, you're on acrylic paint, so just give that a blot. Can you see, you get plenty of ink off there. So let's give that another blot. And then we'll give that a dry because then I won't be using the heat tool too long. You do realise I'm ending up finishing this. So just give that a dry. There we go. It's no wonder it takes me hours to clean up, is it really? I mean, <laughs> come on. So let's go back. And now I can reiterate the sort of the lines. There we go. So then I can add this here. Like, let's have it a little bit further down. And then Tracy's got so much stuff on a desk, she can't find the adhesive. So let's have the adhesive, like so, bring this down here, there we go, let's just add the white just here and we'll, we'll add a little bit of white around there. Honestly, I'm terrible when it comes to touches of white. Just can't stop myself. And at this stage, I'm just going to add some splatters just so that I've got them on each level. And then another thing I like to do is I sort of, let me just, I like to take stamps and think, what am I going to use? So I'm going to, you've seen this, this is a hydrangea skeleton of the floral. I'm and because I can't tell, let's, t let's stamp it out. Let's place this back. This is what excitement does for you. This is exactly, honestly, this is what I am like, full stop. So shall we, shall we try the paints first? What did I say? I was disappearing. Who am I kidding? So, let's do it all in paints first and see what it looks like. Hopefully, if you've got bored, you've just switched off. It's me. This is me all over. And this is why nothing gets done in my house because I get so engrossed. Right, so I'm going to pick up the red. Now, you're going to create your own ink pad, so make sure that's all blended in. And then you're just going to it may not look how I want it to look in the paints I don't know let's just add a little bit more of the red and just diffuse that out I may need to add a little bit more of water but until we try these things we don't know what it's going to look like do we it may be that it's dried too quickly and it might not have worked. Oh, 
yes it's worked oh just love it so let's just give this a bit of a clean Now, I used black ink on this. You can tell I'm getting all engrossed because I'm not putting the lid on anything. Now, I used black ink on that stamp. So there's still some black ink that has been picked up with the paint. But I love it. Oh, what a mess I'm getting in. So let's just take this now. Now, remember, it's meant to be slightly distressed. It's exactly as my photograph. It's from my garden and it's a skeleton of a hydrangea flower. What was left as it fell to the floor. And there will be a few lines here and there and dashes on the stamp because it's all the textures it will be distressed because bits of the plant will be missing i need to clean my hands now it's up to you whether you want it in the paint or whether you want it in black ink How long have I been on now? There's nothing like getting engrossed, is there? There we go. There we go. So let's give my hands a clean because it looks horrendous. And I know that you'll probably be sitting there and saying, what does it look like in black, Tracy? So shall I show you that as well? But let's just give this stamp another little clean. Just so that we haven't got that paint because you've got, this is fine, fine detail. Let's just, stamp this off onto some of the card chuck that on the floor like i do let's see what it looks like in black for you I need to give the stamp another clean let me just stamp this in black for you detail on that I just think that is exquisite personally I really do I'm still cleaning the stamp because I like it so much look at the detail in this just gorgeous so it's just let me see so can you see the floral's quite big and that's what I wanted to show you on the A5 stamp set. So that will stand on its own. So what am I trying to say? You could mask this off like so. Actually, I could create that into a card. Mask that off and you could add the, the light bulbs with it. So I'm just trying to give you as many ideas as possible. So I'm now going to stamp. I've still not finished this project that I'm supposed to be doing. In fact, I'm not doing any of it. I'm just carrying on. I need a piece of scrap card. There we go. So I'll just take the black ink. Like so. Look, there's ink and everything all over my fingers now. And this is exactly what it's like when I'm in the craft room 
and I get a new release. I don't know what I want to do first because my mind's just swamped with ideas. So I just literally grab everything out and I have a play. It's just what I do. So I can't believe I've been on one hour, 50 minutes. Can you see even the clock is slightly distressed? the bead or the so now I'm going to have to have a play because I've got to the stage now where I know I want to add some kind of floral and I don't know where I'm going yet so what you need to do is stand back so can you see like for instance if I just tuck this clock in it just balances that one there so now I know I like it, but what I'm trying to get you to do is walk away, unlike me, walk away from your project, look through a camera lens that does make things look completely different. So walk away. In a minute, I'm going to end up stamping onto the actual background cards of the stamps in a minute. So I'm just going to go around here, like so. So you just have to take a little bit of time now, just doing some finishing touches, whether you want to add a floral. Let's add. Can you see how just adding each stage, you're just bringing it to life and it's the attention to detail that you're, you're, you're sort of taking notice of. And using a fine brush, game changer. And because I've got so many images and what I can use, it's just, see, I've got to make, I have got to make a, a sample with this. I've just got to, I mean, look at that. Instantly, I've got to make a sample with that. Not on this video, you'll be pleased to know. So I'm then going to take the little small wren from the A5 stamp set. What does love for the moment? Precious moments, I'm sorry, I'm talking to myself. So I'm going to take the little wren from the A5 stamp set. I'm going to have to clean up. Lost my kitchen roll. <laughs> Let's grab another piece of kitchen roll. I'm going to grab the little wren. From the A5 stamp set. And to add the little wren here. Like so. So just take your take your time allowing that just to absorb onto the surface. Go yep, beautiful. Let's just make sure that that's not moved too much. Again, you would let this, I've got glue on me now, you would let this dry a little bit, but you would bring in these white areas. 
that I've just sort of given you an idea to. Let's just take, there we go. We want to ground that little, little beard. Just so that it's not just floating there. I'll just add a few more splatters just so the beard is included and the clock. Then I'm going to go back to the A8 stamp. And we're just going to stamp this under some scrap card, the same sentiment. Free your imagination. And that's what I'm hoping these stamps will do. That's what I want them to do. Let's move that out of the way so you can actually see something. Don't want it in two separate words. Let's have that in two separate words. Sometimes I like the text split up, sometimes I don't. Just cut that down. That was terrible cutting out, there we go. Just cut that a bit smaller. There we go. So I've now got the free Your Imagination. I'm going to add the free your imagination. Do I want the imagination there? Oh, I really do hope that you faff as much as me. I want to keep it, that's better. I want to keep it in the cluster. I bet you're sitting there thinking, this mad woman said that she was finishing in a minute and she's still here. So let's add that there. And we'll add imagination. But then creating, that's what it should be like, shouldn't it? Where you just can't stop so look you've got free your imagination just hold that down a bit that's it so free your imagination the little wren oh. and I, I still may add a little floral yet but I'm stopping now so I'm going to add this to a black mat because that makes all the difference. And I really do hope that you've gained something from this video. And that's why I've taken a little bit longer. Well, let's, let's not beat about the bush, bush. A lot longer, I can't speak. So that's why I've taken a lot longer just to show you in great detail just how and what I do when I receive some stamps. So then I'll place this onto the 5 by 7 card. Again, the piece I worked on was 4 by 6. The black mat was 4 and a quarter by 6 and a quarter. Card blank 5 by 7. Pink frog super smooth card and I cut my card blanks from A3 card. Now none of this was planned, none of it. And it's just where inspiration has taken me 
from these two projects. One was leftovers and one was what I started to create. And I absolutely love them. And I may just add, let me show you, not that I can see anything. I may just add, let's have a look. If you're ever unsure, use your masking sheet. And I'm going to add, shall we see what it looks like? How many times have I said goodbye? How many times have I said that? Let's move this out of the way. Let's have a look what it looks like. And most of you have probably stopped the video from recording 20 times because I've said, oh, I'm going now. And have I gone? No. Right, there we go. Let's just add the floral. I'm not even going to be able to tidy up because of my little fear babies. The bellies are rumbling. So let's just cut this out. is where I'm going to faff for England and I already know I love it <laughs> so I'm going to add that okay let's add a little touch to the stem let's add a little bit of pin flare and a little bit of adhesive just on the set stem so that I can catch it should I need to. A little bit of pin flare. Bring in the card. Just catch that there. Bring you out a little bit. You need to not there we go, so we can see the sentiment. There we go. And just so that you can see that, I love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. And the only thing I would do now is once this is all dry, I'd go round with a, a grey pencil and just add a little bit more shading. Just when that's all dry there, when it's not wobbling all over the place. And that's it, honestly. So I hope you enjoyed that little workshop and insight into how I work. And I hope you'll give that a try. So love to all and I'll see you all soon. I'm off to actually tidy this mess up. See you all soon. Bye for now.